Good morning and welcome to Dunsborough Castle Golf Course. I'm Stuart Imerson, the golf course manager here. I'm joined with Jonathan Gaunt, golf course architect, to look at the changes and improvements that we're going to make to the 10th hole. So Jonathan, why are we doing this? Well, there are certain things that have changed about golf in the last 50 years, let's say. Um, we've got an old golf course here, James Braid original. Uh, technology has moved on, golf is hitting the ball further and in relation to that, some of the hazards that would have been in play back in his time are no longer in play. So we're going to give it a 21st century update, but with respect to the history of the golf course. Perfect. Should we go down and have a look? Let's go and have a look. So Jonathan, as we walk down to uh, the fairway, what are the things that we should be, should be thinking about? Okay, well, we were talking about the fact that you had a bunker on the right hand side which one was, was one of the original James Braid bunkers, yeah. at 195 yards. That's no longer in play. Okay, golfers are hitting the golf ball much further than that. We're going to put a new bunker in at yeah. 245 yards on the right-hand side to reflect the same kind of shot challenges. So the tee shot becomes more challenging. The bunker on the left-hand side is already in place, yeah. 270 yards. Yeah, 270. Yeah, and in relation to that, you're just going to have to think really carefully about your tee shot. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jonathan, the location's been decided. We're at uh, 245, 250 yards from the metal tee. Yeah. Um, now we need to talk a little bit about the design and the contouring and using sort of the natural, uh, natural sort of lay of the land. Yeah. Uh, will you talk us through about your thoughts? Yeah. Well, the kind of bunker we're going to put in here is a fairway bunker, not too deep. And the shape is going to be a, an oblique angle to play. Okay, so instead of it being at right angles or running flanking, it's actually going to be much more strategically placed so that you've got a much better um, indication of shot angle. Um, you're going to be able to take on the risk if you need to. As we were talking about earlier, we are talking about 250 yards carry. Okay, yeah, yeah. so the bunker needs to be shaped to take all those aspects into account. Yeah. Okay, so we're on the, the 10th fairway, um, we've got the location, we've got some paint on the ground. I'm going to talk a little bit about the paint um, that Jonathan's left us um, and then we're going to have a bit of fun and we're going to actually build the bunker. Um, what we'd like to do is we're trying to uh, make sure that the bunker's in keeping with the surrounding land. Um, so what we've got here is we've got um, an area where we're going to transplant some rough in, some fescue turf from the golf course. And um, we're going to have some swales, a bit of mounding, which is going to be uh, plus 70 centimetres, and that's going to rise up, give them a quite an intimidating face on this edge of the bunker. And then after that, we're going to create a slight scallop here just to allow the sand to be seen from the tee box to give the golfer a little bit more of an intimidating shot. So now we've got all that designed and ready to go. It's time to get the machines in and get our hands dirty. So we are starting to get beaten by the light, but as you can see, the bunker is starting to take shape. The lads need their beauty sleep, so we will be back bright and early in the morning for the steps of building a revetted bunker. We're getting ready for a busy day out on the course, um, getting the tools ready, the lads ready and myself ready. I'm going to be in the thick of it this morning, showing the lads and you the steps into building a revetted bunker. See you out on the course. So for this project, um, we're recycling the turf from the site. Um, we do that for a couple of reasons. One, it helps keep the cost down and pretty much to cry and shame to waste. And the turf's absolutely perfect for the job. It's fescue, we're cutting it an inch and a half thick. Um, this allows the real stepped face to be on show throughout the season. It doesn't grow a great lot, so in the summer we don't have to do a lot of maintenance to it. Basically, this turf's perfect for the job. The next step is the base. Uh, this is a key part of building a revetted bunker. 
you need to make sure that the base is completely level for when you lay the first layer of revetted turf. This is the most physically demanding part of building a revetted bunker. You'll definitely build up a sweat, so it's best to have all hands on deck. The next step is the first layer. The first layer is so important for many reasons. You need to get your shape right. If the shape isn't quite right, by the time you get to the top of the revetted wall, it could be miles out. It's just like cutting a green. If you get a bullet in to begin with, it sets you up for the rest of the job. So we're going to spend a little bit of time and it's going to make the rest of the job go far more smoothly. After the first row has gone in, we've put two more in and now we start to think about the taper. The taper basically allows us to build a smooth revetted face up the natural contour of land. We do this by shaving off the soil on the bottom side of the turf, building up nice and gently to the inch and a half thickness that we use for the wall. We do this all the way around the bunker where we have an incline of turf leading up to the natural edge. Once we've done that, it, this allows us to put a final row over the top and it blends up all of the taper turfs and all of the rows together. Another important part of revetting a bunker is the backfill. The backfill locks all the sods together, making sure there's minimal movement once the bunker is built. The majority of the revetted wall is now in. You can start to see the angle of the face. The angle we use is an angle to allow us to blend in with the natural land, rather than using a fixed angle that may leave an artificial look. So now that we've created the scallop and we're starting to contour the natural land, we're trying to blend in the bunker with the existing dune system and hopefully the bunker will look like it's been here for years. All we have left to do now is a little bit of turfing, so time for some hard graft. The turfing is done, the sand's been added. This bunker needs a little bit of time to knit in before it's ready for play. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like to gain some hands-on experience in building revetted bunkers, please check out the Dunstable Bunker Camp Facebook page. Thank you. Can I turn around yet?